it's okay now to it's cry. time to go to Gary V. And he actually, speaking of crying, that's the perfect segue. Speaking oh of crying, God, perfection. Gary V. Uh, doesn't doesn't want to cry. Tell us more, Cam. So, oh, this is not the first time Gary V. has done this. He recently also had another video in which he was talking about trust fund babies and how sad they are. Mm -hmm. So he has developed a habit, in my opinion, of, um, you know, sticking for the little trust fund baby. Mm -hmm. Sticking up for the rich guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love his thing. I just I looked at his bio. Early investor, Facebook, Venmo, Twitter, Snap. However, he also talked about all these other companies that never made it and like failed and he doesn't list those. Just, just saying. Yeah. I love it. <clears throat> um, okay. So we're going to specifically watch one about, um, modes of transportation and the emotions associated with such. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Let me reset. I'm done with people saying shit like I'd rather cry in my Ferrari. <laughs> It's the stupidest fucking statement of all time. So fucking stupid. People say shit like that when they don't realize what crying is. Depression is horrible. Unhappiness is horrible. Nobody wants to fucking cry in their Ferrari. I'd rather be happy as fuck taking the bus. I'm done with people saying shit like. Okay, agree with what he's saying. Uh huh. But yes, but um, first of all. <laughs> I don't think that's what people mean when they say I'm going to cry in my Ferrari. I don't think they mean it. Yeah, I would rather want to kill myself today. <laughs> yeah. Just, um, I don't think it's a, like, it, it's, oh, I wish Savvy was here. Is this a straw man um, <laughs> where you compare two things that are not really like that? When people say that, what they mean is like they want to have some money to survive. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it, the same thing. It's like, well, I, I'm going to be probably upset either way or nothing's perfect ever. So I might as well have money to, you know, be upset, being upset with money. And then also, I don't know. And uh, whatever. I don't think he means it's it because he's it's never rode the bus ever. So I don't think. Yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of times it's like a matter of people not being able to really like survive or survive like in a decent way that they feel like they have some leftover money or whatever and I think that's where it comes in because like there is the whole debate about the ethics of making money and that you know oftentimes and I would agree with that people have made their money in very unethical ways so yeah that's including I think, him where, including him and including others um <laughs> But anyway, so I find that it's very, it's it's very tone deaf, especially now, because like there's just so much happening in the world. There was a pandemic. There was a recession in 2020. There's another recession now. It's like, just I don't know what is what is this obsession that self help influencers have with like money and just pushing that and essentially in this case it's kind of like also intertwined with like no i would rather be talented and poor and i would have so much better odds it's like <laughs> i mean okay <laughs> okay good luck do it then but, you know but like what if you know what if you're talentless and poor like what, what then no like, help what, for you why don't we compare the talent talentless rich people to the talentless poor people instead of Agreed. talented poor to talentless rich mm -hmm. like it's like kind of feels like he's not using the right criteria if that makes sense and i i feel the same way did we show the the one before that i'm talking about i feel like we did talk about it at one point which one the one with the, the one with the trust fund baby yeah, yeah yeah we did a segment yeah on okay it. okay it's mm -hmm. not in my head sorry for a second i was like am i imagining this? no it's on the channel <laughs> we cut a highlight of it too so if you want to watch it it's on there yeah so this is the same thing it's like you know, profits over people, indeed. <laughs> I think I, this is a um, uh, like a what do you call it? Like um, a trend, I guess, that I see with influencers and even like the person who comments, like Jasmine Star. I see her all over my feed about like so, Instagram. I'm gonna teach you. I'm gonna teach my masterclass on Instagram or whatever. You know, it, people start to go. 
you know, money's not that important. You shouldn't worry about money that much. It's all about passion and purpose. When they have secured multi millions of dollars and are secure in that and feel like, okay, I have a, an engine that is producing money for me. Now their messaging switches, of course, because now you're, you're teaching classes or speaking about things that might not make people money. So now it's not about the money. Now it's about the purpose because that's easier to sell and how do you quantify purpose and feeling good? You can't. So it's like, well, you know, I never promised that I was going to teach you how to make money. All I promised was I was going to teach you to find your purpose. And that seems to be the pivot. And it also makes you look like a good guy. Like, oh, he doesn't care about money. It's like, well, now that he's got multi, multi millions. Yeah. He doesn't have to worry. And that's fucking obvious. Yeah. And I would agree that that's what they try to pretend like it's all about the purpose and that's what they're teaching you. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, every single person that is teaching you about purpose is telling you how rich they are and how Always. poor they once were. It's like, what's it, what, like if, if you're talking about purpose, why do we need to hear your sob story and how poor you once were and how amazing you are now about the fact that you have money now, like all of that stuff. I just don't... I, I'm... It's, it's upsetting. I don't know why. It's just very frustrating because it, especially when he comes at it from this angle of having a lot of money, it's like, what do you know about depression and, and, and poverty like combined? You don't know anything mm -hmm. about it. Like you literally have not lived through it. Your yeah. dad had like a wine company anyway. So even that level, I don't think he was poor. So yeah, it's like, it's kind of trying. It, it's... um condescending it's condescending to people who are actually going through depression and having uh other circumstances that are like difficult mm -hmm. i yeah i totally agree and i don't know who he's talking to like again like who like his audience with oh trust fund babies are you know the worst and they're so sad and depressed okay that's like a very small small smidgen if any of his actual viewers i think most of his viewers are like teen boys to you know the millennial men mostly who are wanting you know financial freedom and wanting passive income all these things that we've been told for now a decade that is possible if you just buy my course and we all sort of deep down know it's not possible so this message of like oh well trust fund babies have it the worst and all that I don't know who he's exactly targeting here because it's not his audience necessarily. So I think he just feels yeah. confused about, or he feels like he needs to make it known that he's different than other influencers. <laughs> he's different than other gurus. And he definitely has that vibe where he like tries to differentiate himself from like a Grant Cardone type who's selling a course, who's like, you know, come to my conference and pay me money directly. Gary gets paid by those con influencers, confluencers, but he does it indirectly so he can keep this like squeaky clean image, which I find to be just as. I, yeah, I never think of Gary Vee as, as clean. Like to no. me, he's doing the same exact tactics of the self help industry. He's uh, capitalizing off of people who don't have money. And I, it feels a bit like he's losing touch, like you said. Like who remember who your audience is like mm -hmm. why are you constantly like just talking so kindly about all these trust fund babies and like rich people when your audience is most likely not rich mm -hmm. people you know, and, and it been... so sounds like he's been accused of something and he's like defending himself oh, he is. almost Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People. I mean, that's the biggest criticism is like you're rich now. And I think he's always sort of been, you know, somewhat OK. Not everyone's parents like he will tell him his story as if he's an immigrant with a story. And in a way, in a way he is an immigrant, but he came when he was two. <laughs> So, okay, the memories before living life in Belarus, I don't think are very clear. So he lived in New Jersey his whole life, essentially. His dad owned a business, which, you know, is difficult. But by the time Gary was like, you know, middle school, high school, I think it was doing very well. So he didn't really have the same story. Like his dad's story, his mom's story of coming to this country and making it is really the American dream story. His is a story of privilege. Sorry, yeah. like I know he doesn't want to hear that. He does, he wishes in a way that he was his dad, probably, as probably a lot of men 
think you know deep down in some ways that like oh if only I had the I don't know whatever that side but um you know I, I think he tries to make his story more vulnerable than it really is he's a guy who who got really lucky t- made a lot of smart choices early on in his career and now he's trying to continue it but yeah he's losing touch with like yeah what's the point now yeah, and it, it feels, I, I guess maybe the reason why this immigrant thing is really annoying to me is because I am, I, or I was an immigrant and I potentially will be back in the UK as an immigrant again, as like this first generation, as in I moved, like my parents didn't. So um, it's like you. most people would say that the kids of the immigrant are first generation and I'm just a bit like, <laughs> the kids are born there like yeah. they're literally living in that culture when it, when when someone uh is like moving to a different culture as an adult or like whatever not at two years old definitely like maybe when you when they're like ten, whatever they can they can go through the same thing but like at two years old like he doesn't have even like, you're learning the language anything. like every other kid in, in america's learning at that yeah. time you're not having to learn it later it's different it's it doesn't you mean don't it have to hard, adapt yeah it it's makes a different things story up. yeah you, and it's like a whole other experience and i i do think that there is a level of of culture that he probably has within the family that makes mm-hmm. him different than other like kids that are just born in American families. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he grew, grew, grew up in that culture. Like his friends were, you know, the same people like Americans, like the language was the same. He didn't have to adapt to these things. Yeah. And I even, I remember talking about this a uh, long time ago, actually um, about best dressed. Mm-hmm. Because her dad is an immigrant in in the U.S., but he's from Britain. Britain, so uh, people are, were like criticizing her for saying that he was an immigrant. But I'm like, okay, yes, true. Like he, and maybe he's not he's not poor. But like being an immigrant is not all about being poor. Like just yeah, <laughs> there's I don't know. It, it's a misconception. I feel, and also it's like when you move to a different place even though i guess like for him it's easier because the language is the same but you still have to adapt to that culture it's still like other people other places another culture so you like the same kind of things of being an immigrant are happening save for the language in his case Mm -hmm. and it's like i would i would say he's a hell of a lot more of an immigrant than gary v (laughs) you know what i mean Yeah. And he'll tell his story like at every talk he gives, he says like, I'm from Belarus and I escaped communism or like, you know, it's like sort of like that. It's like, is that what happened? escape any, (laughs) oh my God, this is so annoying because actually like my parents lived in communism, my grandparents lived in communism and that was like a hard time for people. That was awful. Like the level of control the communists had over people was insane. Mm -hmm. They, They were not even allowed to be religious they were not allowed to like believe in a God because God mm-hmm. was above the government. So mm-hmm. they were not allowed. <laughs> My parents actually got married in secret by, by a priest in the house because oh, wow. my dad was in the military. Mm-hmm. So um, it's very, it's very different, but his parents would have experienced it. He did not, he does not understand what that is. He does yeah. not know what that is. Like he may have heard of it. Like 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 yeah. I've heard of Your it. Your parents you know, have told like, you. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't he's he was not he didn't escape communism. <laughs> he he's taking the story on his on his own and using it to to you know profit and monetize and make himself uh relatable in some way or not even relatable but almost like they call it like like you know like um What's the word? It's like something porn. It's like empathy porn or something that people are calling it now online where it's like, you know, your story, like we talked about with um, Ed Millett, like, oh, my dad died. And the last thing he told me was like, make sure to profit, son, you know, like taking the saddest part or possibly the most traumatic part of your life and making it into this hero story so that you can now be a figure that people can get behind and go oh wow he's overcome so much either i can do it too or oh i'm going to support him in this man yeah. because he's gone through so much and it's like in reality you know has he i mean 
to me, that doesn't really affect my buying decisions necessarily. If I'm going to buy a product, oh, did the guy suffer in his life? Um, <laughs> but you know, some people, especially when it comes to like life coaching, coaching online in general, engaging with a creator. Yeah. It sort of does, uh, factor in to a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, it is, it is meant to just have people look up to him. It's meant to give him status. It meant to give him credibility. Like I overcame this and I made it blah, blah, blah. It's not meant to make you relate to him. It's or well, it is meant to make people relate to him, but it's not meant to be, I don't think it's ever meant to be inspirational. I think mm -hmm. what it's meant to do is just first, people will pity him and then they will look up to him. They will trust what he says because he clearly knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So that's, it just gives him a lot of credibility and he can then go on stages and ask for like a hundred grand an hour. 